Hi, and welcome to another edition of ProBlind, where we interview candidates for local office and uh, hope to give you the chance to get to know them a little bit better. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the good folks down at the Aspen Thrift Shop for their generous support for this program and for Grassroots that makes this possible. Um, and I am a co-host, Reed Howie and... Ann Mullins. Um, and uh, Ann would like to talk to you a little bit about how to vote. Yep. So welcome, everybody. Um, of course, the first thing most important is voting. Uh, everything you need to know about voting is on pickandvotes.com. It's a really easy website to get to. It can tell you um, how to register. Just have to be 16 U.S. citizen and three weeks of residency in Colorado, and you can register to vote. Uh, the deadlines vary, but you can register up to 7 p.m. on Election Day. The ballot, again, a sample ballot is available on pickandvotes.com if you want to take a look at that. Uh, the ballots were mailed out yesterday, and October 24, early voting begins. Of course, November 8th is Election Day and the polls are open 7 to 7. You can mail it in, uh, but check the deadline for mailing it in. You can drop it off or you can vote in person. Uh, and you can also track your ballot through this website. And then where to vote. Uh, voting, service, and polling centers until the 6th, November 6th, will be the Pitkin County Administration Building or the Sheriff's Office. And then on voting day itself, on the 8th, it'll be the Pitkin County Administration Building uh, Jewish Community Center in Aspen, Snowmass Village Town Hall, Basalt Regional Library. Everything, all buildings are ADA accessible and they'll all be open 7 to 7 and we hope to see everybody there voting. So, hi Erin. Hi. Nice to see you. Thanks nice for to having meet me. You. Nice to meet you as well, both of you. So I've got a couple of um, questions, um, three questions, okay. uh, pretty much growth issues. Okay. And uh, read, of course, pop in any time. Uh, one, this is a done deal, but I, I'm curious your thoughts uh, about Pandora. I had seen in a previous interview that you would have supported the Pandora expansion. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I think, for starters, we're a ski town. So my whole life, when I've watched the Ski Co. address expanding the mountain, from what I've seen, most of it has been beneficial. I think of Burnt Mountain, I think of the Highlands Bowl. Right. And now we have Pandora's, which is east-facing terrain, which as a skier I think is phenomenal terrain. I understand, you know, the destruction to the forest is never good, but I do believe the Skiko did proper environmental studies as to how they would do it properly. I have a hard time saying no to expansion up on a mountain that doesn't really affect downtown much. It just mm -hmm. improves our ski terrain. And the Skiko was paying for it. And we are a ski town, so I would have voted yes, and I plan on skiing it when it opens, and okay. I look forward to it. Okay. So. Thanks. And then another hot growth issue is the airport. Yes. Uh, you know, there is the advisory committee. There have been recommendations, uh, some accepted, some not. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about the expansion of the airport, the terminal, the runway? Okay. Uh, just generally how, that, how right. that should go. So I am against the expansion of the runway. I don't believe the reasons for it are necessary. I am for the expansion of the terminal because it's tiny. I mean, let's face it, you have, there's times where there's eight flights backed up in there and it really is congested. There's not enough restrooms, there's not enough places to eat and drink. So for, as far as the terminal goes, I think we are up for that. But as far as the runway goes, you know, I, I remember reading originally it was, the reason was to bring in CRJ 700s or because they're retiring the CRJ 700s and they wanted to bring in bigger planes but upon further studies they are not retiring the CRJ 700 soon and I do believe I read an article recently that in 2023 United plans on purchasing about 18 of their own CRJ 700s so that to mm -hmm. me eliminates that argument um, and, the CR and when you weigh in the globe the climate impact the green gra the grass em I'm sorry the green gas emissions yeah. of airplanes and whatnot I do understand that, like everything, we should be working towards a cleaner climate in every sense. But if we bring in 28 new flights that minimally are more climate friendly versus 87 G5s a day that don't care about the climate that are coming here anyway, those private planes are what's really 
funding a lot of our airport and a lot of our tourism mm -hmm. and a lot of our second homeowners. So I don't believe the reasons for expanding the runway. I think it's financial. I think that the runway we have now is fine. <coughs> Excuse me, as a first responder, the thought of a plane with 70 people going off the end of the runway is terrifying that we would need every ambulance in the valley from Rifle to Grand Junction to Eagle. But the thought of a plane with 130 people even just yeah. sliding off the end of the runway is terrifying to me. That's our incident management team could handle the lengthiness of a rescue or recovery type effort, but we could not handle the immediate aftermath of a crash of a plane that big. So that's another sure. yeah. reason I've, from the get-go, been against that airport expansion, the runway expansion. Okay. But like I said, I am very much for the terminal being upgraded. Okay. And then the last one, um, again, this topic has emerged yet again uh, after 20, 30 years, uh, the entrance to Aspen. Yes. These thoughts, not so much about the solution itself, mm -hmm. but how the BOCC should be engaged with that. It tends to be considered a kind of city of Aspen yeah. uh, problem, but how should the commissioners the county engage with it, coming up with a solution? I think reducing development is a big part. I think this year they're taking a step in the right direction for less permits, less um, demos, less remodels, because when you sit in that traffic, it's p pretty obvious. Much of it is home maintenance, construction, yeah. crews, window crews, crews coming up from Down Valley to take care of a lot of these large homes. And granted, a, lar a lot of that traffic is also workers. So I would start with trying to reduce the traffic construction. You know, maybe even approaching construction sites with you may only have six vehicles on site and kind of creating a carpool type situation. I know a lot of those workers need their vehicles, but seven trucks coming with one guy to the same job site, you could put tools in the back of several of those trucks and they could commute together. You know, just little things like that. Mm. I don't like how, it kind of seems like a lot is being put back on the city but to me, the city is the county as well. Snowmass and Aspen are municipalities within our county. So yeah. working with them is a goal of mine, collaborating with city council, collaborating with planning. I'm definitely against the straight shot. I've made that you know, very clear since I was started this whole process. Okay. I've been against that since I could vote. I voted for the train. We were talking before the interview. Oh, yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think it's great that RAFTA is providing so much service. I'd like to see more people on it. I'd also like to maybe work with parents in the school district to have less parents driving their kids yeah. to school every day because the traffic congestion is biggest between 7.30 and 9.30. And I've sat on Maroon Creek Road when I was a deputy for 40 minutes almost trying to get back out into that roundabout watching car after car with single parent. And you do have the right to drive your child to school, but I never once was driven to school. I rode the school bus or RAFTA right. with my three brothers. So I think... Working with the city, trying to eliminate traffic is really the most feasible thing we could do right now for that straight shot. I mm -hmm. like the roundabout. Yeah. I remember when it was just a stop sign or a stoplight there mm -hmm. coming out of Maroon Creek and Castle Creek came onto that same right. stoplight. And it, it, it wasn't successful, I think, if people were a little more educated, too, as to how to use a roundabout. <laughs> and um, maybe just That's work on some, also, yeah. Yeah, maybe work on some driver education yeah. in the valley up and down in both English and Spanish. Um, so we're connecting with all of our commuters. So for me, but it does come down to traffic okay. primarily and reducing developments, yeah. things of that nature. Well, it, it's interesting because <coughs> we, can we build our way out of it? You know, if, yeah. can we make, is six lanes next? You know, what, <laughs> what do we do? And, and, yeah. and, but how do you go about as a county commissioner trying to reduce the traffic. That's a tricky one because yeah. you can't tell people in Rifle, hey, stop driving to Aspen to make twice as much money to afford your home down there. Yeah. But most of our work base, I mean, seven or 8,000 people are driving up Valley every day. Um, we can build more housing. That's not going to eliminate the traffic, though. That'll be a hand hundreds of people off the road, not thousands of people off the right. road. So that's a good question, Reed, because what do we do? No one's really seemed to figure it out yet. And no. How do we tackle that? <laughs> you know, I don't know if it is, I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but I don't know if it is totally a tackleable issue. I mean, Aspen is a hot spot to work. Everybody wants to come up here to make the money. Mm -hmm. So unless Down Valley, you know, employers start paying more and making it more intriguing for people to live and stay Down Valley and work, 
this problem isn't going away anytime soon. But like I said, I would like to encourage more raft of ridership, less people driving. And I see a lot on Facebook on Roaring Fork Swap, a lot of people go on there and kind of complain about traffic issues in the valley and whatnot. And I've seen a lot of the parents saying it took me an hour and 12 minutes to get back, to, back and forth to the school. And it doesn't have to be that way. But I've also seen people say the school bus has taken 45 minutes to get their child right. home to Cemetery Lane. And that was at the height of the Castle Creek Bridge. I mean, that needed to be repaired. So right. we have to just sort of suck it up, for lack of better words, and accept, I think, sometimes that traffic is what it is for now. And until we can slow down development and people coming up here right. to work, I don't want to lie and say we can slow that traffic down yeah. because I'm pretty realistic and straightforward. And unless we want to discourage people to start stop working in Aspen up here, there's not... a a very clear end in sight for the traffic issues, I don't think. No. Is that one of the reasons that uh, I, I think about that moment where somebody says, I'm going to run to be a county commissioner. You know, what, what gets you out of the chair to go a, and get your petition filled yeah. out? Yeah. Is that it? Is it traffic? Is it, what, do you, um, what, what, what's the motivate, <coughs> what motivates Aaron to be a county commissioner? I won't lie, a lot of it was housing. Um, I've watched for several years the county not really jump in the housing game. I'm not trying to build massive developments everywhere, but what little land we have that we could potentially add to our local growth, because it's not, to me, it's not growth. New people coming to town, it's just removing people who are losing their homes, like Centennial, Phillips, Hillside. You know, those people are going to need somewhere to live. So that was a very passionate part of mine. I grew up here with a single mom with four kids. So we moved around probably 11 times from kindergarten till my mom won her first APSHA housing in the mid 90s. So I, you know, I know not everyone wants new housing, especially I'm learning that out in the county. You know, a lot of people don't want that growth. So hmm. housing was a big thing for me. Um, just kind of being like a rational, logical citizen that hasn't been a politician. I've always wanted to kind of jump in the game and bring a perspective of someone that has worked, that is still working, that has volunteered a lot, that did not grow up here with money, that does not have money waiting, you know, just a normal, regular citizen that's in my mid-40s. I want to represent that younger generation, but also be in touch with the older generation. So that's, you know, I like serving this community. I'm curious, then, I, probably everyone knows this, but I don't know what you've done for work. Yeah, so that's fair enough. Um, I ran, my brother has a very large, successful transportation company, so I ran that for about 14 years. Um, until my early 30s, I was on the APSHA board for about five years. When I left working with my brother, I went to the sheriff's office for almost six years. I've been a volunteer with Aspen Fire for coming up on 17 years. So I've, you know, I've also done every odd job, ski mm -hmm. instructing, waiting tables. Right now I work at Clark's Market in Snowmass, which I found I really like. I didn't think I would like it so much, but... You get really in touch with the community when you work in a yeah. grocery store. Yeah. Exactly. It's kind of like the hub of social up in there, up there in Snowmass. Right. Everyone yeah. comes in to say hi. So, yeah, I've dabbled in every industry, and like I said, I was on the All Citizen APSHA board from 2009 to 2013, which I wanted to stay on, but between the fire department, sheriff training to be that, I just did not have mm -hmm. the time to commit properly. So now I'm at a point in <clears throat> life where I miss having a job that I can take home at night if that sounds crazy. I want a job where you can be passionate about subjects, where you really can maybe make a difference and influence, you know, the outcome of Pitton County a little bit in the future. I'm not, you know, so naive to think I'm going to get on that board and be like, we're doing this, and you're listening to me, Patty, and, you know, Mr. Postman. Like, I want to work with them. I want to pick right. their brains as a bunch of old locals and see, like, why haven't we dived deeper into housing and why have some of you wanted the airport expansion and just kind of commingle generations of knowledge together and see if we can make a difference. Yeah, and I wanted to thank you for, <clears throat> yeah, your service at the fire, Aspen Fire and the Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office. Um, but going, kind of changing course from the urban parts you mentioned in Pitkin County, mm -hmm. it's Aspen and Somas are the, the centers. Uh, the majority of the county is, is uh, open space, public lands. What are, what are your concerns about, well, there are threats 
all sorts of threats to our public land, everything from climate change to development. Right. Uh, is there one, one aspect that concerns you, or generally, how would you approach uh, better protection for our public lands? I think we're doing a great job. Um, working okay, with we'll Aston, and, yeah, I think yeah, working with Aston Valley yeah. Land Trust and preserving okay. our open space. I think we have a lot of open space, and I know I've ruffled maybe a couple feathers with this suggestion, but I think we have a little bit of open space that could p potentially be used for housing, hmm. smaller projects, um, maybe out by the intercept lot or Cozy Point. You know, they will add to traffic a little, but that is workforce traffic immediately coming into town. I think, I don't know. I go to a lot of other counties, like our infrastructure and our parks and our open space here is insane. I don't know of other counties where you go <clears> and there's just endless hiking trails and preserved land where no one can ever build again. I love that, like that mm -hmm. we can't sell that to developers, that one guy can't sell off six lots for $8 million each, that that stays preserved. So I think we're ahead of the game a little mm -hmm. bit versus other counties when it comes to protecting our land here. And I think it's amazing okay. how many people, like I think of the Moors recently, they absolutely right. could have sold that land for astronomical exactly. prices with what people are paying for land in development. And instead, in a very generous manner, they chose to give it back to yeah. the county they love. And they've done so much. So, well, And I think that's partly trusting the county that yeah. they will take care of this land. Yeah, and they do yeah. take care of yeah. it. And I love that. Okay. That's why I know it's a little touchy to say, you know, maybe a little bit of that open space could be developed. But the places I'm thinking of, <coughs> excuse me, are not attractive. <laughs> to, like, the billionaire yeah. who wants to build his yeah. mansion. Like, nobody wants to build their mansion, on, you know, north of the Aspen Mass Trail out there, you know, right off a right. highway. Right. But I think people that want to live here and have a life here and raise their children here won't be picky about where right. they could potentially have a home. So. so you're, you know, the, what is it, the Lumberyard Project yeah. out at the ABC, that's something that, that kind of density is, is okay with you? No, that density drives me crazy. Oh. In every um, <laughs> survey they've sent out and whatnot, I'm more for quality of living. I don't understand how with three or 400 people in that small of a space, that's quality of living. You know, we, no. we have a morale. We have the Berlin game, seasonal rentals right off of stage road there. We have like places like that. I don't know that a property that dense is what I would agree with. I would definitely downsize. If I had a say in the lumber yard, I would downsize and I would have built it 10 years ago. Because mm -hmm. we've owned that property for a long time. What did we pay, $18 million for that in the early mm -hmm. 2000s? Yeah. Still just sitting there. Which, And I know there were contracts and leases, I believe, from the lumber yard. Right. But $18 million is a lot to pay for something we're not doing. And so I think maybe to fix that problem and the lengthiness, the city's proposal is to put a ton of stuff on there. But I look at like 1235 East Cooper, sitting untouched for, since I was on the Aperture Board, we fought about what to do with that. We lost the chance to buy the Boomerang lot. We mm -hmm. lost Park Circle. So we have all these awesome areas that we could have developed and you know worked on housing that we've lost, basically to Mark Hunt, to be honest. He owns the Boomerang lot now. He owns yeah. the Park Circle rights. He, bought the housing credits from what I understand. So <laughs> I do think the city and county need to work together on this one. Yeah. Well, it does seem like APSHA is changing too mm -hmm. in, in how it's run and, and is it as effective as it once was or? For me, I liked it better when it was an all citizen board. Um, Interesting. A lot of the reasons that frustrated myself and I remember you know, Ron Erickson and Marsha Goshorn, unfortunately both are no longer with us, but we would get very frustrated because we would spend hours, 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 reading over, debating, speaking with the homeowners, discussing issues. And if we would make a decision, it often would get trumped or overruled, you know, by the powers that be, which is council or commissioners, you know, that have a say in it. So I think it's a kind of stay in your lane type thing. I know that when you're a commissioner or councilman, you do serve on other advisory boards and committees. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to things like housing and stuff, I think it's safe to just let citizens decide what happens with citizens versus government elected officials putting their hand in. So I think this current APSHA board, they are coming up with some ideas and trying to make some changes. Um, I sorely miss when Tom McCabe ran it. I know there's been some <laughs> nice leaders afterwards, but it seemed like it flowed quite nicely back then. I can't dis APSHA because without APSHA, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Nor would any of my family or friends. Um, so I love APSHA. I just would like to see it a little more citizen involved. Yeah. So what about the Phillips Trailer Park? I don't want well, to kick those people out. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, what, I what do you think that. needs to happen there? I do think we need to develop it. Um, small, you know, mm -hmm. 50 to 70 units. I would love, I remember I asked at the Woody Creek Caucus if those 40 people that live there would have first rights to rent the new APSHA controlled units. And I, I think the answer might have been no, from what I understand. Oh. So it's not a guarantee, which I know some of the developers in town who have built employee housing, they do get to pick a couple people, you know, one mm -hmm. or two people that get into those units that they're associated with somehow. So the thought of displacing you know, like Linda Lay here, Debs Bamesberger, you know, any of the high, I don't know if, who's still down there, but I know it's a array of very old school locals. And mm -hmm. it, it is a great piece of property the county bought, but I want to very delicately address how we properly build housing there and also try to protect those people. Because it's just like Centennial, we're just, they're just going to be displaced. Yeah. And there's nowhere to go. If you live in an Airstream and rent land in Pitton County, where you, there's not somewhere else you can call up yeah. another place and be like, may I rent this lot? So the thought of kicking some of those people out breaks my heart. But I do think it's great the county acquired it. That's what we need to do is acquire land that can be developed so we don't have to always look to open space or other people. So I want to protect those people in this venture of building new housing if we can. Well, how do you get the county to be more active in housing? Why aren't they? I, I don't know. I mean, pleading and persuasiveness and maybe some more um, real life stories about how hard it is for some people. Most of the board has homes or all of the board. They own homes and they have here for quite a while. I own an Apsha home, but it's so, you know, it's easier to get complacent and not see the dire need for it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the commissioners recently said that it's the city's problem um, housing, which I'm, I'm, she retracted quickly, but just the thought that that even crossed someone right. representing an entire county of 16,000 people's minds when, when you get out there and you actually talk to the working class, almost every single person's first concern is housing, that, from what I've experienced in the last month of campaigning. Housing, 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 and there's only a little bit more we can do with what we have, but right. I would like to try to do that. So when you're out campaigning, that's the primary thing that you hear. Most people, yes. And yeah. I will not lie, I started my campaign with doing all of the employee housing um, between yeah. Snowmass, Lazy Glen, all in Aspen. It was fun. You know, I got to show my mom who lives here in the summers with me but is not here full time. I got to show her all. She never had seen Snyder Ranch. She had never seen really? Stillwater up there on Fabi. So it was really cool to show her what they have done with APSHA. But yes, most people I have come across, even people that live in APSHA, are questioning why aren't we doing more with housing. Wow. So we're so short staffed at the store. Yeah. They're all coming from Newcastle and Rifle. So Yeah, and you mentioned um, advocating for certain things. You know, when you're on BOCC, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your time is taken by going to this very joining other groups across yes. the state and advocating at the state and the federal level, everything from, from water to child care support mm -hmm. to uh, climate change mitigation. Are, are there certain interests or, or have you looked into those various groups at all, what, what you'd like to pursue? A little bit. Definitely want the child care. Mm -hmm. um, that's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll, at 47, I will still be the youngest member if I get elected on the board. So none of us have, some of us have grandkids coming. My goddaughter is having a child in December. Oh. So already we're talking like sign up for preschool now, yeah. four years <laughs> out. So definitely child care. Climate change is interesting, but I'm also a sponge at the moment. So whatever is open, whatever committee open. they need, whatever advisory board the other four members aren't interested in, I, c I want to learn in four years all the aspects of being a commissioner. So I think being on those boards, even if they can be boring meetings or something that's not your hardcore passion in life, like that is the best way to learn right. the ins and outs of the job. Or driving through a blizzard. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind that at all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what has been your experience? <coughs> Have you been attending board meetings? How do you get up to speed? It's a really big job. I, w I watch online a lot yeah. and I follow their, the BOCC website. They keep it up to date with current issues and it's hard to follow everything. You know, I'm not, going to say I know everything they do because right. they do a lot. When I sit with Kelly sometimes I'm like, wow, you know, when she talks about things 
meetings and issues, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's exciting. Like, I really can't wait to dive into that. I'm one of those locals, my, my best friend and I, we nonstop gab about local politics. And we re I read the <laughs> papers. The papers are a huge source of information, I think, in this town. Um, but yeah, I've watched some online meetings. I haven't gone in person. I don't, I'm not, I'm a little recluse, you know, since COVID and whatnot, but I, I haven't gone in person, but I do like to watch them online. Yeah. And I like to watch city council ones online too. I, I was saying I used to watch her on TV, but I never met her in person. So yeah, that's, I just try to stay up to date on most issues, especially the big ones like the airport and Pandora's and housing and the short term rentals. You know, I, th I think we'll see where that goes. A lot is being made about what might be a little because very few people are applying in the county right, right. for the permit. So uh, it'll be interesting to see maybe a year from now the studies of how that comes out and if we need to continue spending that much right. time on that. So. Well, then another issue, you, you've seen this plenty, I'm sure, is, is the jail. Yeah. And what are your thoughts about that? You know, expansion, right. programming, <coughs> what do we need, what don't we have? I think that jail can be improved. I spent a lot of time in that jail, whether or not it was <laughs> bringing an arrestee in or just hanging yeah. out with the detention deputies over yeah, there. Yeah, you might right. want to explain that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say, what did you <laughs> worry about that? that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I like working in the jail. I do think they need a separation of the male and female pods. I did think <clears> it was kind of neat how they all can be together, but obviously lines were crossed so that can no longer be. that. The jail has room for expansion. How did we just build this monster county building and this monster city building right there? But we can't improve our jail right there with what we have. I think we can improve it. I think we can make it a little bigger, a little more modern, a little safer, um, a little more officer safety. You know, it's such a cool jail to be arrested in because the detention deputies are all so nice and warm and inviting. It's not like I've been in Garfield County Jail, too. It's cold. It's a big, cold cell, like what you expect of a jail. Aspen is a slightly more warm and inviting jail. We don't have a lot of like hardened criminals in there, you know? Yeah. I think when we get the people who do violent crimes and take it to the next level, we should still have the option to take them down to Garfield so they can be put in their own isolated cell. But as far as our local jail goes, it can be improved, in my opinion. What do you think about the uh, current detox program? It's, it's quite it, a bit different than it was a few years ago. Yeah, it is a little bit different. Um, I often actually worry a little bit for the people that work the overnight detox. Because a lot of people, you will, you know, as a deputy or a police officer, you'll take the intoxicated person up to the hospital, and then they will get released, and they frequently just go across the street to the HHS detox overnight sleep center, um, right. where yeah. there's volunteers, I believe, that stay there at night and take care of them. So I think it's neat that we're helping detox people. Right, but... It, do you think need more support or more programming? or yeah, do, you, do you think the jail should be more involved than it is, or should it be just left to, what is it, recovery resources? I think that we have to be realistic that cops are not, we were trained with mental health, crisis yeah. intervention training. Up here, our, our law enforcement, I think we're trained above and beyond most law enforcement agencies. But I do think the jail has to have some capability to handle mental health or detox at the time. Because mm -hmm. if you're getting that at 2 in the morning, you're not going to be able to find a therapist that comes right away or right. you know, a trained professional that comes to detox. So I, I don't think it's terrible to have a couple beds within the jail for someone to safely detox at night without actually being detained or arrested just to get them back on their feet safely. And then when they're sober in the morning, offer them all the resources the county provides for when substance were, abuse and mental health. When you were a deputy, who... What's the largest number of, of people in the jail at any time? I mean, I want to say at one point, because they, you know, they have the list on the board. I don't remember there ever being a full jail when I was working. What's a full capacity? I don't know. I, I want to say okay. it's 27 beds, maybe. Okay. Um, I do remember there being a, probably about 20 people, close to full. There were times where there was several women and then a full house of men. Hmm. But it always seemed manageable, you know, until unfortunately one of the detention deputies recently got attacked right. and injured, yeah. and I love her. She was a wonderful person that, she was kind of like the mom of the jail. She treated everyone very nicely, but that really brought up the safety issue. Right. So when you do have a full house like that, and they're all commingling in that room, I do want to see a jail where it can be immediately back in your cells, locked down, and they could do that okay. at the current jail, yeah. but it could use improvement, safety standards for sure. 
Well, I don't know why you want to be a county commissioner. It's, it, I mean, it's complicated. It moves very slowly. Yeah. You've been doing work as a, for example, as a deputy, where you can really have an on-the-ground effect. Yeah. And it, it's so removed. What? Why did you stop being a deputy? Um, <clears throat> several reasons. I had an, an, an abnormal amount of injuries when I was a deputy. I got rear-ended by an intoxicated driver. And then I had a, a, a muscle torn in my back at training. So it was, you know, I was yeah. kind of taking a beating. And I won't lie, my thoughts and morals and ethics no longer aligned with Joe DeSalvo, the sheriff. Oh. Um, I chose to leave on my own terms with my head held high instead of potentially letting him dictate how it goes like he's done with so many other deputies. I don't want to badmouth anyone. I just want yeah. to be honest in the fact that I left because I did not want to represent Joe anymore. In my heart. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised by that, but I'm, mm -hmm. I appreciate your frankness yeah. for it, and <laughs> I'll respect it by not asking more questions Thank you. Of, <laughs> about it since you're running as a county commissioner. Yeah. Um, but I, I do, you know, a lot of a lot of folks get to be a county commissioner through avenues of being involved in the planning commission, being mm -hmm. involved in boards that uh, the county has. You had some time on. APCHA, mm -hmm. and was that, I got a little bit confused, that was on uh, the regular APCHA board when it wasn't elect elected officials. Correct. Right. It was just five citizens that were hired by, I interviewed with city council right. for the job, right. or and for the advisory. I think that changed 2019 was when, yeah. when that changed, yeah. we had the elected officials on the board. Right. <coughs> yeah, the... the the former way it was organized is the way I'm familiar yeah. with it. Yeah. When it was always independent in the sense of council people and commissioners weren't on it. Right. I love um, that. <laughs> but uh, have you had other kind of involvement with the county or the city? Not on a board level. No. Yeah. Um, that's why, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm just a normal citizen that wants <laughs> a chance. You know, the to see how normal citizens do. You know, I, I think of Kelly, and she's learned so much in the four years, but she worked in the elections office when she started with, right. you know, no board experience, and she's learned through the course of the four years. I think she's learned very well, like, what goes on at the board level. Mm -hmm. So I think county commissioner, city council are the type of jobs that you can prepare for it, I think just by being a, a citizen that gives back in general and pays attention to what's going on. But I don't think there's a lot of jobs that are like that. So until you're sitting in a... It's like being on an oral board interview every day, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you're, once you're sitting in that room with five other minds going over this stuff, all these issues, is where you really learn, like, what direction you want to go in, how you're going to work mm -hmm. with these people. So I, li I like the thought. A lot of people are like, are you crazy? You just sit in meetings all day. I'm like, but c meetings where you're learning kind of interesting right. stuff. And I'm coming up on 50. You know, there's so many career opportunities in this town. There's a lot of jobs, but... This is a job I've been interested in for quite a while, um, since before I was a deputy, but I really enjoyed being a deputy, and it was a, a passion of mine. I loved being a deputy. So this, to me, is the next level of county commitment or civil commitment I could mm. potentially do. Yeah. Um, if I don't win, I'll find other avenues. I'll still be an active citizen. I don't know that you have to be on boards to always be an active citizen. I just mm. am a local that gives back, and this is a great way to give back. That's wonderful. Yeah, I'm excited for the chance. Yeah. And it, but it still is. It's a huge public service kind of commitment. Yeah. And, and you know, you'd mentioned that in your campaigning, you're hearing a lot about housing. Has there been anything you've heard that was a surprise? You know, that where you went, oh, I, I wasn't thinking that. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. And I've also had a lot of people ask me the issues I'm focused on, and then I'll be like, well, what would you like to put? They're like, oh, I don't pay attention. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so we, I'm just giving you a little bit of what's going yeah. on then. So, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know how to answer that, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and, you, and, and I was just curious about it. And I wanted to circle back down, back to Pandora. Okay. And, and I understand the support for it from a skier. Mm -hmm. You know, of uh, this is great terrain, it's going to be fun to ski, it's wonderful. But there are these arguments about you're expanding terrain. Right. Does that mean there's going to be more people here that need more 
waiters that need more cars. That, right. <clears throat> and should we be allowing that? It's kind of the, the little Annie argument of, mm. of if, if we have the, a bigger ski area, we're going to get more people. How, yeah. Yeah, how do you reconcile that? Or what do you think about that? That, argue, that argument doesn't weigh too heavily on me. I don't think the Highlands Bowl brought more people to town. I just think it brought more activity level out of us skiers that are already here. Oh, um, I, I think it's on. It's twelve thousand feet on top of a mountain. I did not like how the ski goes. Well, if you won't let us have this, and we're going to develop homes up there, like that, yeah. irked me. It's like don't do that. You know, if if you're not getting your way, don't threaten us with how you can do your imminent domain power or whatever it would be called over us and do what you want up there. But it, I just don't understand. I guess I can't see the reason to argue against it because I don't think it's going to add to the tourism yeah. here. I think it's just going to make it even better. We're a world-class ski resort. Aspen is... Like, I don't even want to go to other ski resorts because why? Our mountains are so amazing. So to add another, you know, several acres on top up there where once upon a time you could only access that terrain if you had hundreds of dollars to go with the backcountry powder tours... You know, I want. I don't have hundreds of dollars to go with those fancy expedition tours, so I want to be able to ski that yeah. terrain as well. And I think when you're paying like two hundred eighty dollars a ticket day, whatever it is now for our tourists, the more the merrier for them to ski. That's a lot of money yeah. for a one-day pass. So, well, another ski question, <clears throat> but not as nearly as serious. Mm -hmm. Where did you teach? I worked at Snow Cubs oh, up in Snowmass oh, um, oh, for Chichi Gustafson. All through college, she was phenomenal. I got to, yeah. I would come home for my five week break, and she would put me to work for five weeks. I'd come home for spring break, she'd give me the full week. Um, oh, when I got great. back from college, I stayed there for a season before I went into the hotel industry. Yeah, for Molly Campbell at the Gantt. So I, yeah, it was what fun. Yeah, great experience. I've gotten to yeah. work under some phenomenal women in this valley too, oh, that yeah. have really yeah. kind of led the way to want to be one of those women that can hopefully lead and guide the youth. Huh. And, Leave an impact. <laughs> you know, the, the one kind of subject area that we really haven't talked about much mm -hmm. is climate. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and how it, it's, it's in some ways hard to talk about. It is. Because what do we do? You know, and, and, but it, to me it is related to all of the other issues. Absolutely. You know, more housing, more skiing. What do we do about transportation? Mm -hmm. What about the airport? You know, how, how, in your thinking, how does climate play into what the county can do? Right. So with developments, for starters, all these monster 20,000 square foot mansions are not doing a lot for the climate. And I know it's one or the other. So if we're going to be allowing these large developments that aren't climate friendly in the process, why can't they be for the locals? So we have a workforce here instead of one more person with an empty 20,000 square foot house sitting you know, out there in Chevrolet. Oh, you're saying if you're going to build 20,000 square feet, why not house? Why not do it so you're building it for 80 people versus two people? Oh. Okay. So and it, it is impacting the climate, but it's impacting the climate the same as building one of those monster mansions versus, you know, a six-bedroom Manny Mitchell type place. They're yeah. going to be the same size, but one is going to house people that are actually giving to our workforce mm -hmm. versus the person flying in on that G5 adding to the climate disaster, getting in there, rented two Cadillac limos, which, you know, is how my brother has made his money, so I can't fault that. But I think that's one of the things. I think, like I said earlier about the airport expansion, I'm not buying that the reason for a bigger runway is more climate-friendly planes. I have looked into a lot of the planes, and the difference is small. There's like a CRJ-900, a CRJ-300. The 737 is almost worse than the 700. So hmm. I'm not buying that necessarily. The airport is tricky with climate because we need those tourists. We need those people to fly in here and spend money and keep our lodging taxes high and keep our sales taxes high. So it's like you started it. Climate's a tricky one. Yeah. I do think Pickens County is a little bit ahead, again, of other counties when it comes to addressing it and trying to work with it and trying to hold developers to it. But I think we could do a little bit more. Yeah. And then it, internal programs with the county. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like like the benchmarking or changing the building code or are you familiar with with way and the, the solar array that now is up there yeah. by Woody Creek um, things that the county can actually do and get done in 
a few years yes. as opposed to the airport, which is way out there. Yeah. Do you have ideas about what programs might uh, you might push for? I love the solar day? panels. I love that. Yeah. I feel like there's even room for more out there, and you can't go wrong with solar energy. Right. Um, I would have to do a little more homework once I'm on there. I haven't, and I feel a little silly, but I haven't delved into every single aspect to learn no, as much as I should. Yeah. So building code and whatnot, I do realize that they're making it harder for the developers, <clears throat> which I'm all about, you know, make them really earn the right to build a home here properly. Um, it's kind of like what I said earlier, like limit the amount of vehicles on their job sites, little yeah. things like that. Um, but I would like to learn more about that if I get elected and once I'm on there. Okay. I would yeah. like to dive in, like I said, to every little. There are a lot of opportunities. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's exciting though, you know, because it was sort of like being a deputy because every day you wake up, it's different calls. You're getting yeah. a different, you're never going to have the same day twice. Right. Um, and I feel like commissioners and council often have that. I'm ready for the scrutiny of people that don't agree with me. I'm ready to listen to them and try to balance all these different decisions. I'm ready for criticism, if that's what comes with it, because yeah. I think it comes with being a public figure. But <laughs> ready does. to take it all, <laughs> yeah, and, and roll with it and work with it. Yeah. Absorb every opinion and try to come to common grounds. Yeah. Well, you're never going to make one party entirely happy, but um, I think we can work together. I'm yeah. a baby sister with four older brothers, one step. And I'm like one of those peacekeepers, you know, I've always been the, my brother calls me Dr. Philbird, because my nickname is, <laughs> he's like, here you go again, trying to solve the problems. But that's great. That's what I like yeah. to do. So let's say you are elected. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and, and it's four years later. What do you hope to accomplish? I think about that all the time. Yeah. I do. Um, housing. I'd like to get, the county only has produced 17 APSHA affordable housings, which That's I learned. Yeah. I learned at our forum. I did not know that number was that low. Um, so I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe being one of the people that gets that going against some pretty staunch opponents out in the county, but I want to do it with class and with um, proper designs and sizes and proper density, nothing crazy. So my, my main thing I'd like to affect is housing. I would like to affect childcare, see if we can get the county to open maybe a couple more facilities as well. Right now, there's only you know a handful of infant beds, a couple dozen more toddler spots open. I mean, mm -hmm. don't we want a young community here? Well, most of us came here young and had the opportunity to stay and raise families here and grow up here, and that's becoming less and less of an option for mm -hmm. people. And our community is what makes us so appealing. You know, tourists can go anywhere, but they come here and they come back here. Because they love it here because it's <clears throat> such a great community. So I want to try to affect those things. And So you don't want to solve the entrance to Aspen? Or? I don't want <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I, you know, God bless Jeffrey Evans. He's never let it go for 20 years. But the roundabout, the entrance is what the entrance is. I refuse to put a straight shot through Meralt that charges onto Main Street there at 8th Street. People will come flying through at 40 miles per hour onto that straight Main Street hmm. that man that's on that home, I can't remember his name, I apologize, um, right there by the Aspen Villas where we would have to take his home to put a straight shot highway through there. Bruce oh. Berger. Yes, thank you. Right. I, I'm not, I don't want to do that to anybody. Yeah. So, No, I don't want my legacy to be the straight shot unless they can put a train back on the Rio Grande. And that ship has sailed. <laughs> I think <laughs> so. so. Yeah. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> and, uh, that's interesting. So uh, the straight shot, in addition to disrupting uh, the people who live there, it's a safety issue for you. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at Main Street as it is. People are just jockeying to get to that, around that second S curve, and as soon as they get on that straight shot, they're gone. And, right. you know, us locals, we know how many people have been hit on Main mm -hmm. Street and how many animals have been hit, and pedestrians do still have the right of way, and you see them get blown by on those crosswalks all the time now. Mm -hmm. So, And I would, you know, this is a little bit silly too, but I would like to see the HOV lanes used in the morning and afternoon as a two-lane entrance in and out. Oh, They did that this winter. I can't remember what the cause was, what the event was, but it was so backed up that they ended up opening that second lane at the roundabout on the way out of town in the afternoon, and boy, traffic moved off Main Street. Hmm. So just little suggestions like that. So we only have, we have less than a minute left. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm curious <clears throat> if we've covered everything you want to say or give you the opportunity to... I have to warn you, you can't make a call to action, uh, uh, but 
telling why people might right. vote for you would be fine. Well, I love the questions you asked. Each interview is different, so it's been kind of fun. Um, oh, good. You two have a deep knowledge of what's going on around here. I like it. Um, I would say that you hear people constantly saying they want change in government. They want something different. They want people that aren't politicians, or they want a little bit of normalcy. And I think that's what I'll bring. Just a very candid, honest. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Just a candid, honest, straight talking, transparent. You won't leave a meeting wondering where I stand. Um, so I just want that chance to represent the normal working, not trust funder, not, <laughs> you know, spoil, just a normal local working class Aspen individual. I just want a chance to um, represent them. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, guys. It's yeah. been great thank getting so to know it's you. Been lovely. And thank you for watching. Be sure to get out and vote. Um, and uh, we would like to also thank the good folks at the Aspen Thrift Shop for making this possible.